Hi everyone, thanks for joining. This is Mrs. Silvestro and we are continuing with The Wild Robot. Today we will be reading chapters 10, 11, and 12. Chapter 10, The Reminder. I should remind you, reader, that Roz had no idea how she'd come to be on that island. She didn't know that she'd been built in a factory and then stored in a warehouse before crossing the ocean on a cargo ship. She didn't know that a hurricane had sunk the ship and left her crate floating on the waves for days until it finally washed ashore. She didn't know that she'd been accidentally activated by those curious sea otters. As the robot looked out of the island, it never even occurred to her that she might not belong there. As far as Roz knew, she was home. Chapter 11, The Robot Sleeps. Roz stood on the peak and watched the sun sink behind the ocean. She watched shadows slowly spread over the island and up the mountainside. She watched the stars come out one by one until the sky was filled with a million points of light. It was the first night of the robot's life. She activated her headlights and suddenly bright shafts of light were beaming out from her eyes and illuminating the whole mountaintop. Too bright. So she dimmed them. Then she turned them off and sat in the darkness and listened to the chorus of nighttime chirps. After a while, our robot's computer brain decided it was a good time to conserve energy. So she sat and anchored her hands to the rocks, her non-essential programs switched off, and then, in her own way, the robot slept. Chapter 12, The Storm. Roz felt safe on the mountaintop. So she spent the next few days and nights perched on the peak, but everything changed one afternoon when a low flying cloud crept up the mountain and Roz found herself surrounded by white. When the world faded back into view, she noticed more clouds floating south past the island. Then she heard a deep rumble behind her. The robot turned her head around and saw that the sky was filled with a swirling wall of darkness. Light flickered here and there, more deep rumbles. A storm was approaching, and it wasn't just any storm. It was as fierce as the one that had sent the cargo ship to the ocean floor. The wind picked up, and the first drops of rain tapped against the robot. It was time to go. Roz unclamped her hands and began sliding down the peak. Hot sparks flew from where her body scraped against the leaning slab of stone. As soon as her feet hit soil, she was off and running. The rain fell harder. The wind blew faster. The lightning flashed brighter. The thunder cracked louder. So much rainwater was falling that rushing rivers of runoff started springing up everywhere. Roz splashed down the mountain, searching through the gloom for any kind of shelter, but she should have watched where she was going. Her heavy feet slipped and tripped and she tumbled right into a mudslide. Our robot was helpless. The river of mud whisked her downhill, slamming her into rocks and dragging her through bushes and sweeping her straight toward a cliff. Mud was pouring off the cliff like a waterfall. Roz frantically clawed at the ground, grasping for anything she could hold on to, but the flow only carried her faster towards the edge. And just as she was about to plunge over the side, she came to a hard, sudden stop. Mud surged around her, sprang into her face, and pinning her against some solid thing, she blindly felt with her hands and recognized the thick roots and trunk of a pine tree. In an instant, she was pulling herself into the branches. The wind whipped across the mountainside and Roz heard the familiar thunk of pine cones pelting her body, but she didn't mind them. She was just happy to be safe from the mud flow. The robot locked her arms and legs around the tree and waited for the storm.